Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now today we are talking about game streaming services. A game streaming service is a service that lets you pay a monthly fee, for example, to run your games on a super powerful computer elsewhere and then have it streamed back to you because you might not have the processing power or the graphical capabilities to run the games yourself. And that's how GeForce Now works. All you do is you add your games from Steam or wherever else to the GeForce Now application. They will run on NVIDIA's Tesla P40 or whatever crazy graphics card they have over there, and then they will be streamed back to your system. It means that if you've purchased PUBG, for example, and you don't have the power to run it on your computer, you can just run it via their computer instead and have the picture displayed on your screen, to put it very simply. Now, like with all of these game streaming services, you require pretty decent internet, to say the least, and there are some hardware specifications to stick to, but we're going to be ignoring all of that today. We never really play by the rules on this channel. We just, how do I put it scientifically? mess about so uh, yeah i've recently purchased a house bought the fastest internet package i can afford but we're not going to be touching that today either we're going to be using the internet at my grandparents house which is pretty diabolical it's not the worst in the world i'll admit but it is very slow and i can just about play multiplayer games on it under normal conditions so with this NVIDIA GeForce Now service, it's going to be interesting to see how well or how not very well it runs on my connection. As you can see here, this is the speed test. If we divide this figure by eight to get the actual download speed, you'll see that we are not working with brilliant speeds. In fact, to download GTA 5, for example, a 70 or 80 gig game, it's going to take me at least 24 hours. Seriously. Some of you may be watching and thinking, well, that's quite fast compared to what I've got. But in, uh, in the UK here, where we generally don't get brilliant speeds anyway, this is still considered not very good. <laughs> now, aside from this, we're also going to be testing this service on this, um, an NVS295 NVIDIA graphics card, a very old card that is capable of running absolutely nothing traditionally. I mean, I tried to fire up Fallout New Vegas here, and as you can see, the game crashed and GTA 3... For example, a game from 2001 ran with about 20 frames per second. Here you can see the NVS in action during the first level, and it didn't last long. Not just because the card was terrible, but my driving is also pretty bad. Just look at that. This is all your fault. So anyway, let's get into it. I'll talk about GeForce now, and we'll see how it runs on my internet and this terrible graphics card, which doesn't matter as much as the connection itself, but... It'll be interesting to see whether or not we can run the application on a card that is lower than the stated minimum system requirements. So first things first, you need to download the program itself and doing so gives you guys at home another chance to check out my internet speeds. If I try to upload, say, a 1.5 gigabyte video to YouTube, it will take all day, maybe longer. It usually gets stuck at about 4% and jams there for hours. So once you're in and you've added your already purchased Steam games to the GeForce Now library, it's going to run an internet analysis. I'm very nervous. I feel like the NVIDIA engineers are watching and judging. This shouldn't take too long to complete, but I guess it once again depends on your speeds. I've sped this up in editing as it took a couple of minutes, but to no one's surprise, NVIDIA do not recommend that I proceed past this point. But we're going to ignore that. My bandwidth measured 10, and apparently 15 is actually required, but 50 is recommended. I'm also going to leave the streaming settings on automatic to see how everything looks, because I don't want to interfere with the settings that are going to be displayed. I think we're limited to 60fps at 1080p with this service, which means that the Tesla card Nvidia are using is way overballed. I mean, it's a 6 grand card. So you're about to see the games running on the previously demonstrated NVS295 Workstation GPU. This is a card with 8 shading units and 256 megabytes of GDDR3 memory. This, in combination with our basic broadband, is going to be interesting. So NVIDIA recommend a GT600 series card or Radeon HD3000 series GPU, or even an Intel HD2000 series graphics adapter. 
found on some of the old Intel processors from the Ivy or Sandy Bridge range. I can't imagine the MVS is much better than integrated 2000 series graphics. Unfortunately, I can't get frame rate or usage tools working as we are streaming the games, but what you see quality wise is what you will get. I've made sure to export this video with a much higher bitrate than usual to try and give you a better idea of how these games look, but YouTube will compress things anyway, so bear that in mind. Off the top of my head I would say that this looks like something between 480p and 720p gameplay running at around 30fps or more in some cases. Despite the low resolution and the constant spotty connection warning I never actually lost connection entirely so if you do have similar internet to me you should be okay and if you're using a smaller display, maybe that of a tiny laptop, then the image quality will certainly look sharper. Don't get me wrong, there will be drops and random dips in the resolution, but as I said before, the connection held up over the course of the few hours that I spent gaming. Now where you'll notice the biggest issue with a weak internet connection in terms of the graphics quality is in areas with lots of grass on screen for example. The whole sharpness of the terrain disappears somewhat and you're just left with a few blurs of textures in some instances but to be honest PUBG really doesn't look all that bad. I was expecting worse, I was expecting closer to a 360p image. It's also worth pointing out now that I don't think cloud streaming services like this are meant to replace traditional gaming you know it's just maybe in case you're on the go and you want to decide to play this on 4G something like that which admittedly will again provide a better connection than the uh, broadband I'm using today. I then moved on to Metro 2033 Redux with the maximum settings at 1080p of course. The NVS will not run this game and if it does you'll probably see around one frame per second. I'm not even making a joke, I mean it. This felt closer to 60fps, it was definitely higher than 30 put it that way, and once again our spotty internet connection message flashed up a few times, but it didn't totally fail. I am a fan of game streaming services, but they seem to have a habit of slipping into irrelevancy very quickly. Maybe the low £5 monthly price of this service will prevent that. I think this is a limited time price though, so I'm not sure what that will go up to. And for anyone wondering, no, this is not a sponsored video. So far, I'm surprised that this internet connection has held up, and of course the card, though it really plays no real part in performance and is just there as a means to display an image. It does of course support DirectX 11 as well, and I'm not sure that using a DX10 or DX9 card, or maybe something even worse, would still work, but I guess you could always try it out, considering it is free if you want to play for an hour at a time. Now as we make our way through this opening level here, I want to talk about the input lag a little bit. It didn't really feel like there was much. It didn't feel too different than just playing the game normally from my Steam library, which was quite surprising. I'd expect it to be a little more noticeable than this, but maybe the whole low resolution thing helps that a little bit. Perhaps you will suffer when it comes to online multiplayer games like PUBG, but if like me you're not very good at them anyway, well, input lag isn't going to uh, affect your performance anymore. <laughs> Seriously though, it didn't feel too bad, in all honesty. And that's always a big plus with game streaming. Finally, let's look at Fallout New Vegas, a game that crashed before when we used the NVS 295. This time it's allowing us to see the game at ultra settings, albeit at about 480p resolution. With a connection like this, the service is certainly better suited to a mobile screen, but just know that if you do have poor connectivity, connectivity that is apparently lower than the required speed, then you still have a good chance of being able to play around with Nvidia's new GeForce Now game streaming service. And it brings yet another option to the table for those of you out there who have a very weak graphics card but still want to play some of your favourite and owned titles. Overall, well, I've had a pretty good time exploring this game streaming service. It may be worth trying it out on your internet even if it is worse than mine because I wasn't expecting much to be honest. And although we didn't really get a fantastic experience, we still got a somewhat playable gaming experience despite the lower resolution. So 
give it a go for yourselves and if you do be sure to let me know in the comments how it ran for you. If you have a decent connection well I'm sure you'll have a very nice time but I'd love to hear from you all the same. Thank you for watching, if you enjoyed this video leave a like on it, if you didn't enjoy it leave a dislike, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.